Name is Don Fosberg. The rank I was a Seaman Second Radioman Striker. Well, when I graduated from high school, I was living in Illinois, and I uh, hopped a train and went to California and enlisted in the Navy um, and went to uh, San Diego for boot training and then radio uh, school and then was sent to Hawaii or Honolulu, Hawaii. And uh, I caught the, uh, they put me aboard the North Carolina and we sailed out to the Pacific and then I was transferred to the Missouri which was sort of fun because they transferred you by bosun's chair, going from one ship to the other, and they sent me from the North Carolina to a destroyer, and then the destroyer went over next to the Missouri, and we transferred by bosun's chair to that, which was sort of exciting for a young guy. Um, aboard the um, Missouri, you, you know, I came to the uh, Missouri, it's in the fleet, and of course, I was a farm boy. I never had seen anything like this, these, all these ships and large ships, and uh, so it was quite impressive. Um, aboard ship, I was a radioman. I copied code and finally got a job of typing the messages uh, and then routing them to different officers. And we um, had airstrikes, that type of thing. And then, uh, as you know, we bombarded Japan, and this brings up a point that I want to make. Um, in bombarding Japan, uh, I happened to come into the radio shack and there was a message on my desk and the message said that we were to move away from the coast and I can't remember because it meant nothing to me at the time, somewhere around 500, 600 miles because of an activity that was the results would be unknown. Well, obviously it was when they dropped the bomb. and. Uh, after they did that, why well, I was asleep in the bunk and a guy came up to me and he woke me up and he says, guess what, the Japanese have accepted our surrender conditions. And he said, but don't tell anybody. You know, radio men heard the things first. We were the first ones to listen. But within five minutes, everybody aboard ship knew. And there was a little celebration. And then the next day, why well, we still continued in the same activities. Just at a, and uh, eventually we went into, after a few days, we did go into a place called Sagami Wan and then prepared to go on into Tokyo Bay the next uh, three or four days. And, uh, and when we, oh, one just funny little thing happened. I was standing on the O2 level watching them bring uh, the Japanese pilots aboard. It was sort of interesting. And there were some people taking pictures from our deck, you know, with the activity. And all of a sudden they started to yell at me to get out of the way. And I, and I could not figure out why. And I happened to look, oh, about from me to you, there stood Admiral Halsey. Well, what they wanted to do was take a picture of Admiral Halsey watching the, uh, watching the uh, Japanese come aboard. And they sure didn't want Seaman Fosberg in the picture with him. So I left. <laughs> Well, going into it, it, I think the thing that surprised me, or maybe shocked me a little bit, is the destruction that you could see on shore. Now, it was a long ways away. That's a big bay. Uh, also, the filth in the bay. I mean, there was a body floated by, and, you know, things like that. It was pretty, pretty uh, bad. And, uh, and it didn't change for the few days we were there. In the um, then, of course, we had the surrender. And the interesting thing, the surrender was the 2nd of September, which was my birthday, and I turned 19. So it was a great birthday present. Uh, after the surrender, which, uh, you know, I, I actually had to work. I was down, uh, being a radio man, I was down in the uh, cruise mess where we had all the news people come in. And the old story about, you know, the table, well, uh, apparently the British had a very fancy good table that they were going to do the surrender, the signing of the surrender on, and it was too small. So they had to, uh, they decided to get a cruise tape, uh, dining table, and they came down to the cruise mess, and I remember this, they took the table up to have the signing down, and then they brought it back. Nobody knows where that table went. At least they, I, I don't think they do, but they say, you know, some people think they have the original. Then after the course of surrender, we were there for two or three days, and then we left. When we left, um, 
the only thing that happened is uh, the, what we were told is as we left the bay, you have to go to your uh, battle stations because they were going through a minefield, but they knew where everything was, so no, there was no worry about it, except they did prepare. Um, and it was just the fact that we were excited about getting back to the United States. It was a great time. Came back, went through the canal. They always stopped in Honolulu and then went in through the uh, canal and back to New York for Navy Day. And that was a big celebration. As the ship came into New York Harbor, there were thousands of people lining the shore, and we had uh, fireboats out, you know, shooting the uh, water in the air. It was quite, quite a, quite a thing. And then a lot of people came to visit uh, the ship afterwards. Uh, we had about 10,000, 20,000 come aboard the next day. And then after, I, I of course went home for leave because it was getting around Christmas time. Then we came back and we went to uh, Cuba in uh, January or February for our, uh, you know, our, our, and while in Cuba, why well, some Turkish ambassador had died, and to the, the protocol apparently is that you take it, an ambassador back to his home country aboard a man of war. So we were called back from Cuba and we went up to uh, Norfolk and loaded, put the, uh, Turkish ambassador aboard the ship with a lot of pomp and ceremony. And then we took off to go to Istanbul. And uh, uh, we had a uh, cruiser and two destroyers that followed us. So we go over to Istanbul and of course more pomp and ceremony getting the, the uh, ambassador ashore. And we stayed there for two or three days. They did everything for us. We could ride the, the uh, all public transportation for nothing. They had dinners for us. We met a lot of people. Uh, it, was a, it was fun. And of course, I'd never been to a place like this. Then afterwards, we went to uh, Athens. We well, went to Piraeus and then to Athens by train. Algiers. And we went up to uh, Italy. We went to Tangiers and Gibraltar. It was a very nice Mediterranean cruise for nothing. And uh, then came back home and came back to New York. And when we arrived there, well, I was discharged and uh, sent home. Well, I think the tough part is you leave a lot of friends. And uh, when we were discharged, it was four or five of us that, uh, well, some of them I still it came to the reunion here. Uh, and one was a very good friend of mine, a moose, we called him. Uh, of course, he's passed away. but. Uh, he was discharged at the same time. I think the most impressive thing, though, was I was traveling in Seattle, and the, the Missouri was in mothballs at the uh, uh, Remington, I think. And anyway, they said you could go aboard if you wanted to go see it. So I, my wife and I drove down, and gee, there's the Missouri. You know, and I walked up on it, and the strangest thing, when I walked aboard, there were more memories that came back almost like they were real. It was quite, quite an experience and uh, lasted for a few minutes, but it was very impressive.